about this. Six women, three men, including the church pastor, were killed. Um, it's a hate crimes investigation that has been launched on this, and that's how this is being viewed. Uh, how do you, when you look at the, the, what appears to be a diluting of racial harmony in the United States, how do you think we do in this country uh, in that respect? I don't think we're seeing anything quite as bad as this, but of course, you know, there are certainly cases where the Metropolitan Police have been accused of being too trigger-happy. Um, Mark Duggan, of course, being the, uh, the, the, the latest high-profile story. Now, this was a few years ago now, but many people still very unhappy. It spawned the London riots just a couple of years ago. 0345 973 Let's speak with Tariq Nasheed. Tariq is an American author, producer, radio host, and social commentator on African-American social history. Tariq, good evening to you, sir. Good evening. And it's in for being here. Yeah, it's nice to have you with us. Listen, it's uh, it's interesting when we a uh, hate crimes investigation has been launched on this. Is that is that the right approach here? Um, no, not at all. Because this is not a hate crime. This is domestic terrorism, and what happens whenever there is a person of color who commits heinous acts like this, they immediately identify it as terrorism or thuggery, and they give it these very, very distinct terms. But when you use the term hate crime, hate is based on an emotion, and this wasn't an emotional um, attack that happened. This was very deliberate, and it was meant to terrorize the black American community. Yeah, I'm looking at photographs of this Dylan Roof guy, and he's wearing badges from the uh, apartheid era of, of South Africa, which I think feeds into the kind of point you're making. Absolutely, and the, the timing and the location of the attacks, it had very much symbolic um, value. The church was founded by a former slave called Denmark Vesey, who was a freedom fighter, and his, his life is very significant because he was going to lead a big rebellion in the 17 and 1800s against the white population in South Carolina. And also that location was a, a popular place for the Underground Railroad and also, this was the Juneteenth celebration where the freedom of African slaves was um, celebrated. So this was a very significant time, and it was a very significant place. And the way he did it was very heinous, and it was very deliberate. Indeed. Many people would just look at this, though, Tariq, and say, look, you know, this guy was, was clearly nuts. Uh, he's, uh, he had murderous uh, intent, and he had hatred within him, and uh, he acted on it. It's a, it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs. It clearly is racially motivated, but it's, you know, it, it has to be left in that context. Are you saying something more is going on here? Yeah, something more is going there because we have a system of white supremacy where we are, and this happens a lot, not in this capacity where nine people were just blatantly shot, but we have a system of white supremacy where you have police officers who are not really police officers. I call them race soldiers. You have officers in the United States who send emails to each other with racial epithets, and then they go out and act on these racial epithets. And this is why so many black people who are innocent and unarmed are being shot in the back and mowed down by police officers or race soldiers acting as police officers out here. And you have vigilantes attacking black people. So it's not a case of people being mentally ill. Black people in America are being systematically targeted. And this is genocide. And I don't know why the international courts and the U.N., they don't recognize that. So you think there is a, uh, almost a program of genocide from some? Absolutely. In this country, and I noticed when you began the show, you said there's a diluting of racial harmony. And I would like to know when the racial harmony was not diluted. We've always had systematic white supremacy in America where black people were on the bottom and people classified as white were on the top. So I don't know when there was ever this harmonious period in our country or in society where people lived in harmony without the system of white supremacy. It has always existed in our system, and we have not figured out how to deal with that because now we keep sweeping it under the rug. We use a lot of code words whenever black people get harmed. We say things like, well, they were resisting arrest. They should not have run. They should have pulled their pants up. What about black-on-black -black crime? But with this situation here, you can't really divert or... Um, get away from the fact that this was a very deliberate racial attack. This shooter, this killer, this terrorist, he didn't use any code words. He was very specific about why he was shooting black people and who he was shooting. So we can't hide from the fact that this is racial and we have to learn how to deal with that in this country. I mean, and around the world, because I was I was just over there in London and they're dealing with the same thing over there too in a, in a different capacity. Mm. 
You, you mentioned white supremacy, but of course, you know, your president's a black guy, so it's not exactly, that, it's not that, it's that, not that bad, Tariq, is it? It is that bad because one person in a token position whose power doesn't trickle down to help the black masses, that means absolutely nothing. It's just symbolic. So having a symbolic token person in a position means absolutely nothing. And that's well, How is he symbolic? He was, vo he was voted by the people of the United States. But he's symbolic because he cannot do anything for other black people. So that's not progress for black people collectively. That's just progress for him. But you have black mayors, you have black senators, you have black politicians, you have black actors, you have black activists. You, you, you have a, a proud history, do you not, of, of blacks in high-profile positions? You're pointing to a very small handful of people who, again, do not represent the black masses. White supremacy is a global group phenomenon. That's why you can't point to certain people and say, this is your representative. But you can point to the handful of black people who have been elevated out of the crab barrel, so to speak, but they don't represent the black masses. You can have a LeBron James, but for every LeBron James, there's 100,000 black people suffering at the hands of white supremacy economically. So, so back to Dylan Roof, the, the man who mm -hmm. has been arrested then for, for this crime. You, you would comfortably link this in with other crimes, including police crimes against blacks in the United States. You, you believe this to be a, a linked pattern? It is because the thing is, we live in a system, again, of white supremacy where black people are being attacked and usually attacked legally. And what happens is that we have law enforcement or race soldiers acting in the capacity of law enforcement who have normalized harming black people. In this country, they used to lynch black people as a sport. So black people being harmed in this country has always been some form of religious right. So that pattern is still being recognized and it's still being utilized and exercised right now. So I'm not shocked about what happened today because actually I've been warning a lot of black people that this would happen sooner or later because black people keep getting attacked nonstop and nobody's addressing the elephant in the room, which is white supremacy. Has it got better, though, even if it's not at the pace you would like to see it, Tariq? Have, have uh, <laughs> people in positions of power, I mean, I'm assuming if your president's a black guy, it must have at least improved. I don't see how having a person who can't really help me in a certain position improve my lot in life. President Obama can't even mention African-American people, let alone do anything without getting massive backlash from the dominant white society. So Barack Obama has not done anything specific for the black community because he's not been allowed to do so. Again, we have these token people that's put in these positions who cannot do anything for the black masses and the white supremacists say, hey, look, that's progress. And that's not progress whatsoever. We have gone into one big circle. In the 1960s, we had riots all over the place. And there were church bombings where black people were getting killed in church. It's 2015. There were riots all this year, and black people just got murdered in the, at a church last night. We have not moved one iota. We've just gone in one big circle of white supremacy because we won't deal with white supremacy. And you believe this to be a global issue, not just an American one. I mean, Obama not said. Just an American issue. Obama said that oh. we, we, you know, this is something that only happens here. But you think it's wider than that? Huh? <laughs> It's wider than that. White supremacy is global. White supremacy is there in Europe. I just did a sold-out lecture in Europe a few months ago, and they were saying the same thing. The police are targeting people um, of African descent unjustly. Um, you have the economic disenfranchisement of people of African descent. Even on the continent of Africa, which has been colonized by the white supremacists, they put in their puppet governments and they control Africa economically. So white supremacy is a global phenomenon, and that's something that we keep using code words for, we keep deflecting away from. But we're going to have to start confronting the system of white supremacy and try to replace that with a system of justice. Listen, Tariq, fa really fascinating speaking with you, and I know you will uh, divide the room, I'm sure, on some of what you have to say, but compelling stuff nonetheless. That is Tariq Nasheed, American radio host, commentator on African-American social history. White supremacy is global, he said, and he's 
absolutely unequivocal about that. I want your response to what he just said. I said at the beginning of this, is there anything we can uh, take out of what's happening in a, a situation as dire and as awful and as grim as South Carolina when we have nine people shot in a church? I mean, it hardly gets any more tragic. The setting is one of worship and serenity, people attempting to have uh, their own peaceful moment with their God, and a man who laid in waiting shoots up nine people takes their lives, including uh, the pastor and, politi uh, and, and leading politician as well, uh, Clementa Pickney, who was part of the, uh, the, uh, the group of people that were there. Uh, you heard it there from Tariq. Uh, this is something more than a lone gunman. He resisted the phrase that it was a hate crime. He said that it's an act of terrorism in the same way, and these are his words, I'm vaguely paraphrasing, in the same way that we would call it an act of terrorism if it was a black guy that shot up a bunch of people in a church. I'm not sure he's right about that. I, I don't necessarily think that would be the case, but that's what he said. And he talked about this being a global phenomenon. He said these police officers are race was it race warriors uh, that he believed were employed who have almost carte blanche to go around and shoot black people willy-nilly? He believes there's an agenda globally and not an iota has changed since the 60s. Wow. Your thoughts on that? 03456060973. And he's not just applying all of that to the United States. He's saying it's as bad across the globe. White supremacy is a global problem. 0345 6060 973. Late Nights with Ian Collins.